Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. I'm Nova. I am going to be the one that's teaching you a tutorial today. If you're a returning subscriber, how are you doing? Thank you for coming back. If you're new to my channel, I like to make bag tutorials or just tutorials in general of anything that's kind of crafty. But today I'm really excited to do, be doing a pattern from Elita Designs, and we're going to be doing the Amaje Mini Convertible. Um, the name comes from the, the name's definition is kind of interesting. It means like heart desire, master builder. It's you can't just put one word on it. Um, it's kind of it's kind of beautiful. And if I said the name incorrect, please, please, I'm so sorry. I already know how that is. My name is Shinova, but I go by Nova because people constantly say my name incorrect. So, with that being said, we're going to be doing this pattern and this bag is unbelievable when you get it you're going to say okay there's a lot of um, pattern pieces it all comes together beautifully it looks like a lot then when you're done cutting everything out you're like wait that's not a whole lot <laughs> um it is marked for intermediate intermediate to advanced and i normally don't say if i don't like putting labels on that because i believe that if you have ambition to drive you can make anything you want this bag has a lot of techniques that you learned as a beginner, you have as an intermediate going into advance. If you're looking for a fun, challenging bag to see if you could test your skills, this is it. I love having bags like that. It makes me, when I'm done with the bag, it makes me feel pretty amazing. So we're gonna be, uh, for the people that are new here, I'm gonna be using a Juki 5550N. It is a garment sewing industrial machine. So it's similar to your domestic machine, except it has a motor on the outside. Uh, what I did is I swapped out the feed dogs from regular to heavy based off of what Steve from Gold, um, from Sewing Gold recommended we work something out with that and it, it's brilliant. I'm using a 9014 needle. I'm using thread from Wowak and it's a 40 weight and I'm going with um, a neutral beige because I have, my color scheme is very... There's a lot of beige, there's purple, and there's all these different colors, but I want the most color that in there, so I'm using beige. Um, and we're gonna start. Let's start with this beautiful bag. So there is a lot of information. It shows you, um, I love when designers put the anatomy of the bag so you can see where the flap, the coin pocket, the back pocket, and everything goes. There is hardware. You need two swivel hooks that are three fourths of an inch, one slider that's three fourths of an inch, two, uh, four D rings that are three fourths of an inch, and one inch, one one inch D ring. You need six zip sliders, and you can use a tongue lock, a tongue lock, a turn lock, or magnetic clasp, or just yeah, I'm going to be using a magnetic one. Um, and then it shows you each, how you come together with each pack. If you look on page nine, you can create packs and do it individually and knock this out one, one step out of a time. Like, Hey, I'm going to do the front panel. You know, I'm gonna do the back panel the next day, do the lining and the grab handles the following day. You can just work it out. So it shows you each, it shows you each set. You can, like I said, lining, card slots, gusset. One thing I absolutely love about this pattern is it starts off with a card slot. Usually that happens like halfway through the bag and it's like in the lining. So I've never seen actually a pattern that starts off with the actual card slots. And every, every designer has their own card slot like um, method. And I always love learning different methods because you can apply it in your everyday sewing. So this one was interesting because it came together relatively fast and really quickly. She made it short, sweet, and to the point. Um, with this pattern, I highly, highly, highly recommend. My first tip for you is to put your pattern piece with whatever you cut out. So if I have my flap, I have my pattern pieces on it. If I have my card slot, I have my pattern pieces. So that way I can easily grab things and there's a lot of marking points. Her pattern pieces are by far the most detail I've ever seen. She writes down every measurement so you can do it either way. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you how we put together this card slot and then we're gonna top stitch, but I'm gonna show you some different methods. So on her card slot, on the pattern piece, she advises you to make a top section, which this is the top. 
So just draw a T and then you're going to mark down. The first mark you're gonna make mark down is at four inches. So you would take it and mark it in three inches, then three and a half, then three, so on and so forth. So when you do, when you start the first um, pleat, I mean the first thing you're gonna fold right sides together and you can iron or you can finger press. And then you take, as this is like this, you take the bottom and I usually take a ruler to make sure it's straight and you flip it onto itself and then remove the ruler <laughs> and then you iron that pleat and it comes together really awesome look at how it's really even they're exactly like about a half an inch but i can one up you if you're like hey i really suck at measuring and i can't do a i cannot um do a straight line to save my life i get you fill you what you could do is you can actually take your fabric fold down the first line because again she marked all the lines put your pattern piece onto your um onto your put your pattern piece onto your fabric and you can draw each line fold and draw fold and draw and i feel like this is awesome because it gives you different ways you can do it you can do it with the ruler you can have it side by side and just draw the lines side by side or you can do the folding method like i did so with this i'm going to put this pattern piece behind me and we are going to top stitch these three cards i'm going to be using a 3.5 stitch and you're going to top stitch it at one eighth of an inch i'm using a zipper foot um, i will change feet between these and i did not hold my tails okay and then let's do this one um i'm using a narrow foot i will switch between the composition foot and um zipper feet Trim your tails. And then let me do this last one. All right. So we have our card slot. We are going to now measure we're going to top stitch and then we're going to we're going to top i'm sorry i, I got stuck <laughs> we're going to top stitch and then we're going to find its center so it's three i mean three two it helps if i you can do, you can measure it or you can kind of do what I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> it saves a little time. I'm cutting a little V on the very top and doing a little V at the bottom. And then what I'll do is I will line it up. And I will grab a chalk pencil and draw the line. I'm going to now sew up this. Now, I do, when I do the pockets, I do something a little bit different. When I get to the top, the first one, I'm going to turn my pocket around and go one stitch forward or one stitch back and goes back in the middle. These areas get a lot of wear and tear from your credit cards. If you're like me, you're shoving like two or three credit cards into one slot and you don't want the stitches to butt, like rip open. So it just gives it a little bit of reinforcement. Now you don't have to do this. It's just something that I've kind of just got in the <laughs> habit of doing and I wanted to give you that tip.
Okay. All right. So we have this. We're going to now grab our card slots, the sides. It's pattern piece O. I can actually take that clip. And then you're going to want to make sure that wider piece, the wider piece of the pattern is the bottom. So just make sure you have that. You're going to line that up and you're going to have a little overage. We'll take care of that. Or you have, um, that should be good. <laughs> We're going to not flip the clips. We're going to, um, sew this together, right sides together. Three eighths of an inch is the seam allowance here. Um, unless it's otherwise known that that's what it is. <laughs> this little mark is, uh, my three eighths of an inch mark. So make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end really well. And I think I'm going to go over this side one more time because it kind of bared off and it didn't, it looks like a one fourth of an inch and I just better safe than sorry. And it's cotton. So I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, I did. It was like, it was one eighth of an inch off. You know how you, you notice that? Like, nobody else would notice that except the person that's sewing. You're like, yeah, it's it's a little off. And being a little off sometimes can make the pattern not fit when it needs to be. So we're going to top stitch this on the, um, on the side pocket at one eighth of an inch. This is why I have the narrow foot in. <laughs> it just, it's, per it's a perfect one eighth of an inch. going to do it again put a few clips in it so it doesn't shift you always can um, also uh, put stitches um, in here to baste it down to make sure there's no shifting I just that's the reason why I press my I press my pockets and my um, bias binding like forever so they don't really <laughs> go anywhere. I starch it and everything. I'm like, yeah, you're not moving. <laughs> and so that it's prepared for a video too. Whenever you stop, make sure that you're in the needle down position. Okay, now we're going to trim the bottom of the card slots if it's necessary, and in my case, it definitely is. I have about a little, a scant one-fourth of an inch. All right, so our card slot is ready. We're going to now put this aside, and we're going to grab our coin, the coin pocket and the zipper that goes with it and the front panel. Now, again, I really like her pattern pieces because she has measurements on here if you don't want to write it out or you can just cut out the box I mean, and draw where you're gonna cut out. Put this pocket pattern piece aside. Grab my cutting mat. Grab my ruler. Grab my handy dandy box cutter. And take your time on this. You don't have to go fast. You can cut it out with scissors too, especially if they're really sharp. I just finally got used to cutting this on the mat. <laughs> Take your time so you don't go over. Okay. 
do something going here. This is like a regular cheap box cutter that you can get on Amazon or Hobby Lobby's, Michael's, what have you. Just make sure when you do it, you have a sharp-ish blade and sharp-ish dish scissors. So it can look as neat as possible. You can cut this out before you sew, and let's say you really want to edge it up. You can put um, edge paint on it ahead of time, the whole nine yards. So we have our coin pocket cut out. Let me put that back. And we're going to now grab our zipper that is six and a half inches, and we're going to grab our our pocket our coin piece now I know there might be a part of you that wants to make this uh, longer there's a reason why it's just a coin just follow along trust the process because when I made my first one I was like yeah I want a bigger pocket but the pocket's so tiny that you really can't stick your hand in it and it'll be moot you just like now if you put coins or gum or whatever candy in there you can't reach it it's like the perfect thing for you just like my little car keys are candy <laughs> okay so we're going to grab our zipper and we are going to have the zipper going to the left and we're going to stitch this down I'm just going one eighth of an inch, just as a base stitch. Moving all the threads. And then we're going to grab our other side and we're going to put a base stitch on this as well. Okay, so now we're going to grab some double-sided tape. You can use one-eighth, one-fourth. Um, whatever is easier for you. I'm going to be using um, double sided tape that I got from Wowak that has tons of thread on it. <laughs> um, and it's one fourth of an inch. It has like, it catches everything, like all my threads. to do is I'll just get like a seam roller and just roll over the tape really well because I hate when you pull it up and then it's trying to take the zipper with you okay so we're on page 14 and we are going to remove the tape <laughs> my my roller wanted to move when I said that And we're going to position this pocket I usually like to start with the middle and then like slowly finger press all right so we're going to leave our pocket up and we're going to grab long tails and we're going to stitch one eighth of an inch away. I you can you can make markers if you wish, like with a chalk pencil or a tandy leather pen, whatever works for you to know where your stop and start position is. It sometimes helps. You're not going to back stitch. You're going to keep those long tails. And 
make sure your zipper pull is out of the way. Okay, and then we're going to pull long tails and we're going to grab a pen or um, We're going to grab a pen. Well, my thread didn't even catch. So hold on. Don't do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm going to change to a 3, then a 3.5. Cork is forgiving, vinyl is not. Um, this is one of the reasons why I like sewing with cork is because it's a little bit more forgiving than vinyl. All right, there we go. It was just acting a little mischievous. Let's see. We're going to pull our threads so that way there's no back stitch in the front. I mean, you could do a back stitch, but it just gives it a cleaner finish. And at the end of the day, you want everyone to be like, oh my God, where did you get your bag? And you're like, just gives it a more professional, clean look. Okay, and then we're gonna pull these. And I just like tie it off three or four times and I cut the tail a little bit and I'll put a, a drop of fray check or something. I like putting a little drop of glue. Just a drop, it doesn't need a lot. So what we're gonna do now is unclip the top and we're going to push the pocket down. We're going to push the zipper in. And we are going to now stitch from where we ended here, go up, across, and down, leaving long tails. If you have to stop, try to stop with the needle down. Take your time and breathe. You totally got this. Okay. We're going to pull Your threads. Okay. And tie it off. Trim. And do the same thing over here. Pull the threads. And we're going to just drop a bead of glue. Not too much. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to sew the pocket. And if you can tell on page 15, it's kind of a curve. So just like you're going to curve it in on both sides. You could just... just you can eyeball you don't need to draw it in i just wanted you to see so we're going to curve it in and with this you're going to want to back stitch at the beginning and end really well and just curve in the pocket and then we're just going to trim 
leaving like one eighth of an inch or above the curve line we drew. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Just draw it following the curve. And we have our coin pocket all done. All right, we're gonna put that to the side and we are going to grab um, gusset back and front and it's N and M. Have fun, choose different colors, look at the anatomy of the bag. It's pretty awesome. So we are going to the top of this is, this is the top on the smaller piece, is wider. You want your pieces to be, I have excess, cut off your excess shape flex or woven fuse. <laughs> so it doesn't account for the, the seam allowance. See, I, when you look at them, they have, they're supposed to be mirror images of each other. And what I do is I mark my three eighths of the seam allowance on one side. So that way um, I know when to turn and pivot. So on the, sl on the slant, on the straight side, you need to have open and we're going to be sewing up the slanted side. And I'm just going to line these up and just put a clip. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay. All right, and I'm going to sew this at three eighths of an inch. Back stitch in the beginning and the end. I'm going to leave that there, do the other one, and then we're going to just keep rolling with that, this, um, sewing the right sides together, because N and M have basically the same exact thing, and then we're going to trim up the seam allowance to make sure we can get nice curves, I mean, nice points. So I'm going to grab the back pieces again see uh, the curves the straight at the straight edge needs to be open and the curves are going to be part of the seam so we're going to draw these real quick I'm using a pen so that you can see see the seam allowance. Uh, I would recommend like <laughs> um, like an air pen or a water soluble one where you can iron it off. If you're using vinyl or cork, then a Tandy leather pen. I'm using a Westcott ruler because the rulers are the the way they break down the inches are by one eighth of an inch, and seeing the boxes just like helps me out tremendously. <laughs> um, 
I get them from Amazon. They're relative. They're just like really inexpensive. So these are going to be going on to the pocket. Pretty cool how these come together. All right. grab a not that um I'm gonna grab a um I'm gonna use a pinking shear you can use regular scissors and just cut and corner cut like the corners nice and easy getting to that one eighth of an inch I just like pinking shears because it evenly distributes the fabric better in my opinion but there's many other ways you can do it Doing the same thing. I like to do the corners first so that way I can get that nice clean point from um, where we pivot. So it can be clean, really clean, and reduces bulk a lot. So it can be a little bit sharper when we turn them out. Try not to cut into the stitches if by chance you accidentally do. It's not the end of the world. You can go back around the, that same piece and just do one eighth of an inch all the way around. this last one okay and I am going to grab all this and then I'm going to grab a point turner and I'm going to do it right side out. And after you do this right sides out, you can hit it with some steam on your iron to give it a nice, crisp, clean look. And I'm just you slowly using the, the awl to point out the, the corners a little bit better. Okay, and this is the last one. Take your time with this. You can hurry up if you wish, but if you point those corners out really, really well, it just gives it a nice crisp look. And then also when we come to the next step, you don't, you're not, there's not so much bulk in the seam. Looking at the seam. All right. Okay. Now we're going to grab our zippers 
there's there's zippers that you need that are um, seven and a half inches if you're using zipper tape which is recommended and we're going to mark three-fourths of an inch down from one side of the zipper I have like glue on my fingers from the fray check three-fourths of an inch down and we're going to take our zipper and we're going to go where the three-fourths of an inch is and fold and kind of make a nice clean I want to say a little sandwich or like it, it's like a backwards in and an in so you're just going to take and fold at the line and bring the fold forward to the zipper tape and I'm popping a couple pins in and I'm going to bring it over to the sewing machine real quick and I'm going to stitch this down on the sides so it stays. Now I see a lot of cool people doing like the fire trick with it. Again, <laughs> I envy those people because I, I did it once but then it unraveled. Um, you can sit there and you can hand sew it real quick too. I'm just going back and forth real quick on it. Nothing fancy. Removing the pins. Now we have these two. We're going to grab our main front panel lining and we're going to take the smaller the smaller ones that we just did. We're going to sew the front pockets On. the wider side the wider side is on the top we're gonna mark our centers real quick I just put like a V I cut it into a small V I'm gonna do the same thing here cut off the excess will infuse. Okay, so then I'm going to take my V that I just made and match it to Match it to the clip. And we're going to base this on at one eighth of an inch on both sides. Make sure you have your water with you. Take your water breaks. <laughs> All right, we're going to base this on the side um, one eighth of an inch. It would help if I would actually hold my thread <laughs> and I wouldn't have to re-thread my machine. Okay, let's do this again. And I'm basing this on. to the other side Then we're going to take, we're going to make sure that, um, we're, 
we're gonna baste why do we shrink through it? We're gonna baste the zippers onto the the little panels, um the little gusset panels. And we wanna make sure that um we're at least half an inch, so half an inch away from the top when we do this. Oops. Right sides together. So we're going to put the right sides of, I'm sorry, we're going to put the right sides of the zipper tape on the right, on the, we're going to have the right sides up. <laughs> I'm like trying to say the words and I'm just messing up. We're going to have the zipper tape right sides up. And we're going to base that at one eighth of an inch. Use a hump jumper if the zipper part is a little too bulky. And go all the way down. And same thing. We're going to go all the way up and then making sure raw edges meet raw edges. We're now going to grab our main front piece and we're going to put whatever closure you're going to use. I'm going to be using a um, magnetic snap, so I'm going to put the female side on here. Um, there are you she, again, she makes it really easy. She has you can she gives you the information for a female tongue lock or a magnetic snap or a turn. Um, sorry, for a female tongue lock, and then she also gives you the measurements and the uh, where the point where you need to put the magnetic snap. And I'm going to put the female grab a washer real quick. And I'm going to grab um, I usually have like vinyl or cork or foot like leather or something. I grab whatever I can. Um, and I put it on the back of where the turn, where the magnetic snap is. I just measure it in the back. I'm using um, cork and it will be strong enough, but I actually, I just really believe in reinforcements. So I'm going to just stick that on the back. Now I'm going to measure my magnetic snap where I made the mark earlier. And I am going to find my box cutter that just, <laughs> just, Disappeared. Um, it's under right where you are. Pick that up. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's my husband in the background. <laughs> Hello. All right. And then I'm going to put the box cutter away after I put this thing. I'm going to drop some glue. You can use fray check, whatever glue you have available. I just like that extra reinforcement. Stick that on. Put the washer on, and then you bend the prongs. Some prongs are easier to be, um, bend than others. I've had some where I'm like, they won't bend at all. And then I'm going to grab some electrical tape. Because for some reason, duct tape does not work for me. I'm like, I must get this wrong brand. I see everybody using it, but um, I was on serial bag makers website and she has a really cool supplies and I seen this electrical tape and it doesn't go anywhere once it's on. So we have our lock on. We're going to take the right sides. First let me before I do the right size, let me draw my three eighth of an inch. 
Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to sew the, the pieces together at one fourth of an inch. One fourth of an inch seam allowance. And on the zipper sides, we're going to do three eighths of an inch. So on the top, one fourth. On the sides, three eighths. Just if you have to make sure that you have the right sides going, you don't want your turn lock down there, or it could be all sorts of not fun of unpicking and using your seam ripper. Use as many or as few clips as you want. So I'm going to grab my threads. And I'm going to start three-eighths of an inch on one side. Back stitch. Okay, now we're going to go to the one-fourth of an inch. eighths of an inch on the zipper side. Use a hump jumper if that area is a little bulky because we're going from just having like a few layers into having the zipper tape that's folded on itself. So take your time. There's no race. There's no competition. You got this. Back stitch. Trim your threads. And we're going to turn this right side out. And I'm just going to take my um my pinking shears and we're going to clip the sides that you're not going to clip where the zipper is if you clip where the zipper is you have a high 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 probability of um the zipper frame now what you can do is you can go and like use duckbill scissors or regular scissors and cut off the excess like cork or vinyl and just have the expo having the zipper on the side but do not whatever you do do not cut your zipper because I know some people can cut it and they say it doesn't fray I have never had one that didn't fray after I did that so you can go behind this if you're like I'm gonna have so much bulk just go and cut that because the the back side's already stitched down from the basing stitches so okay just gonna move that tiny bag of bulk around the corner because I would like to have a crisp corner as possible and here we go we're going to turn it real quick and then I'm going to get my my boning tool and I'm just going to gently Get these curves out. Take your time. Okay. It could take a little time, a little wiggling. Just don't poke through a seat like a stitch so you don't have to read stitch anything because that could be a bother all right so we're going to then take the this part right here the the, the little mine's is purple for a reason so you can see it you're going to clip this purple down i'm just going to try to poke out this corner a little bit more Okay, that looks better. We're now going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch around. Again, this does, we're not trying to catch this. We're only trying to um, go all the way around. We do not want our flap to go out the other side. So now take your time and one eighth of an inch. 
It's a little bulky over there. Take your time, use a hump jumper, whatever you have, whatever tool you can have to help you. If you stop, don't do what I do and uh, stop with the needle down. And it's again, a transition from a heavier, like we're going through multiple layers and to a lighter side. Okay, let's trim these threads. And we have this sewed down. Now we're going to grab a pattern piece, template H. second I know I have temple H I think I do maybe I don't hold on let's see give me one moment I'll be right back with pattern piece H so okay we found pieces, pattern pieces H, and we are going to take our pattern piece and we're going to draw one fourth of an inch at the top and three eighths of an inch on the bottom. Once we got that, we're going to clip, my clips want to stay in place. Zippers, and I'm just matching edge to edge to make sure it's all clean. And I'm gonna clip this place. You wanna make sure your zipper tape is raw edge, we want matching raw edge. Take your time, get it right so that way you're not like, oh, it's not, it's not even, it's not this. So one fourth of an inch we're gonna sew, then we're gonna pivot at the three eighth of an inch mark and go down. And take your time. See how my zipper shifted? I want to why my why my pull is down. I'm going to just line it up with the purple again. Raw edge to raw edge. You don't want if it looks buckled on when you're doing this, it'll look buckled and worse when it's all sewn together. So we're gonna go down three eighths of an inch. Back stitch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some trimming. You can use your pinking shears, but I'm gonna show you how to not, if you don't have pinking shears, you can use your scissors. You're gonna cut in the corner above, right above your stitch, not on your stitch. I'm gonna do that on the 
hot inside too. And I'm going to trim down this V part of the zipper, not cutting into my other zipper part of the zipper tape. Do not cut in or I'll fray. And I'm just going to trim this cork. and trim down around this one fourth of an inch. Just want to make sure it doesn't have a lot of bulk when we flip it right sides out. Okay. Okay. And we're just gonna use your boning tool and just Maneuver around so you can get it nice and clean, like a nice clean point. And then I'm going to match raw edges to raw edges, and we're going to baste around this with using one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Got a little wonky there but it's okay sometimes i sometimes i like to have contrasting stitching to show that you know i made really like phenomenal stitches but sometimes i also like to have a uh, thread that matches my fabric so case i my stitches go off a little bit nobody will know anybody <laughs> all right so we have that all squared away now we're going to go to page 21 and we are going to grab our pocket and our pocket our little our little gussets that we made we're going to find the centers again having your centers marked is tremendous help in this to actually you don't need your centers we're just going to make sure the wider edge is not matching the top of this We're going to sew together one eighth of an inch. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. One eighth of an inch, back stitch at the beginning and the end. <clears throat> it's gonna you know I, <laughs> I did this wrong I'm sorry I knew it it wasn't looking right let me get my little seam riper it happens and this is why a seam rippler is super important and my mistakes will prevent you from having mistakes <laughs> We're on page 21 and we're going to seam rip this out first. Thank goodness it's cotton. All right, so that's so. We're gonna seam rip that. 
we're going to we're going to put it like this. Let me right side this together. This uh, encases the back. So I'm going to clip this real quick and then baste this down at one eighth of an inch. Back stitch at the beginning and end. We're going to do that at both sides. We're just making sure raw edges meet raw edges and everything's lined up nicely. And grab my other one. I had another one. On it. And I clipped it on. Mm -hmm. Edges to raw edges. One eighth of an inch. Back stitch hotels. Now we're gonna grab our pattern pieces and I'm using a magnetic snap. So I wanna make sure that I put, first make sure that my I cut out my interfacing. I'm going to put my magnet up on my lining, my lining piece so that way it fits. This. I'm really bad at um, tr trimming my um, my lining sometimes, or just like interfacing, because like I did a fuse block, I cut it out, and I I didn't I cut out the the way I usually do it is I cut out all the pieces that I'm going to do on with interfacing first, and then I. Um, Fuse those pieces onto fabric so that way the shrinkage is, is minimum. Box cutter. And you want to make sure you like if you're using cotton like I am, having fray check on there to make sure that nothing frays. And I put deck of a light in the back of this so that way it can have a a nice stabilization and it won't like like pull and tear through I'm looking for my pliers but there they are and I caught them as they fell oh nope I didn't <laughs> use the back of your scissors or you can use a tool some some magnetic snaps are like super super strong and some aren't and then I'm going to grab my electrical tape put that on the back and we're going to put right sides together we're going to sew at three eighths of an inch. Pop a couple clips in there so you can make sure nothing shifts. Right sides together, three eighths of an inch. You can trace it out if you wish. I'm just following the guide on my. Oh, 
I'm just following the guide on my uh, that I marked on my machine. And I'm just going to help reduce the bolt so I have to lay it a little bit flatter. I'm just going to pink around it. Again, you can just do it on this, the more um, circular side if you wish, but I just, it helps with the bolt. And normally what I'll tell people to do is use your iron real quick and get this all mushy. Like get this all really squishy and then turn it and then iron it again. Because it could be, it could be like difficult if it's like cork or vinyl or something along those lines where it's just like it doesn't want to give. And I'm just going to glue threads and, and go for it. This is why I tell people to iron it because it could take a pro like a, a little bit of a process. Just you know, grab some hemostats and just help pull without ripping the fabric, you know. The this is a very small hole. <laughs> I'm like six seconds away from starting my iron and like hitting it up real quick. <laughs> there. It just wants to be stubborn because I'm on camera or just because. Just a minute. I'm almost there. I know it doesn't look like I'm moving that much, but I am. Man, I'm test testing the limits with these stitches. Okay, so after you turn it right side out, which, you know, that took me a minute. I'm not going to lie. But as soon as I got off camera, I finished it in two. It's weird. Zippers and flip turning backs. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. If you're using cork or vinyl, you can use a, a little longer stitch length because it looks pretty and it does it helps with uh, the bag not, not like the holes won't be so close together where it's easy to rip like it perforates the vinyl. I have glue all over my hands. Take your time. If you have to stop, stop with the needle down. Um, 
If you can do it at all once, one moment, then that's cool. If you can't, that's cool. Do whatever makes you it easier for you. My machine sounds weird because I just realized that the the there was a, the turning thing the the roll, seam roller on the timing belt that doesn't help it at all. Let's see. Trim the threads. All right, we're going to put this aside for now, and we are going. It will. One thing, if you were going to use your um, thumb lock, you would put it on now. We're going to grab the main panel that we did with the coin pocket, and we are going to put them together. We're going to. I'm sorry, our credit card slots. We're gonna make turn we're gonna put our credit card slots and the coin. Make sure your credit card slots are facing up towards where the coin um, pouch is. Because having back our credit card slots would not be really functional <laughs> this time. So we're going to do a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to back stitch at beginning and end. Okay. We're going to push this up and have the seams go towards the credit card pocket. You're gonna move your um, zipper out of the way. Not your zipper, but your coin pouch out of the way so it doesn't get caught up in the seam allowance. And then we're gonna top stitch at 1 8 of an inch. Make sure the seam continuously goes towards the pocket. threads then we're going to place our <laughs> we're gonna place first actually it would help if I got zippers on here because uh you can use zipper pocket function without zippers right I'm going to grab two. Oh, I'm, we're also, before we put this on, I forgot to say we're going to sew these top stitching at one eighth of an inch on both sides. So before I put these zippers on, we're going to sew where you see my purple gusset. It's going to meet this gusset, which let me get this corner a little bit more. Um, we're going to put them right sides together. I missed that step, but we caught it before we, you know, put on the panels and we're like, oh man, they don't, what's going on? <laughs> it's not opening up like an accordion. All right. So we're going to just top stitch this, this part at one eighth of an inch and back stitch at the beginning of the end. We're just sandwiching these in because this is what gives it that accordion fill. And just make sure everything got sewn together. Like this part didn't get caught because I did. I should have clipped it more. It's cool. I can fix it.
Okay, now trim the threads and we're gonna repeat on the other side. Going from the inside is a little bit easier. Make sure those corners are poked out. Catching those mistakes prior to putting, constructing it is like really pivotal. Trimming those threads. All right, so now I'm gonna put on the zipper. Zippers, there's two. Sorry, you want, if your zipper is spraying like mine, hit it with a flame or fray check and then let it dry for a little bit. So that way your zippers can go on as even as possible. I'm gonna try this side first every single time. <laughs> okay, and we got the second one. Now we're going to take this and we're going to clip it well. Raw edges meaning raw edges. You're going through some bulk here, so if you want to change your foot for um, a compensating a composition foot or something that can handle the bulk a little better, this is the time to do so. So I'm just going to remove my little foot. I will use it again in here, especially when we do the lining. Or I might use it on oh, don't be me. There we go. When we do the back, it all depends. Like I change my feet a lot, depending on what, I, what kind of stitch I'm trying to achieve, if I'm trying to get a closer stitch or what have you. So we're going to um, go through this and we're going to sew this at one eighth of an inch going down, across, and up. One eighth of an inch of my composition foot is right in between the toes. Okay, my machine did not like that. Hold on. I assure you, it's probably something I did. Okay. I'm back. I just gonna back stitch. See. All right. Making sure raw edges are with raw edges. And we're gonna pivot, go across. The way that the designer made this is like none of the bulky folding thing, clip folding parts are actually in this seam allowance, so it can go really smoothly. Stop with the needle down. Right, just the right edges. All right, so now we're gonna get one of our bottom pieces.
It's pattern F, yeah, pattern piece F. And we are going to place it right sides to our main panel piece. And we are going to sew it at 3 8 of an inch. And again, the way the designer has it is that because it's so it's flatter over here, it's not a lot of bulk. Okay. We're going to press this down. And we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. This is really cute. I really like the shape of this. Then we can trim. I'm going to trim the zipper tail so that way when we put the bag together. You don't have to trim a lot, um, as mine's just go for it. Just trimming so that way it can, um, when you're, when we're doing the binding, it doesn't get caught up in anything. See how cute this is? Look, it opens up. How cute is that? You have your little credit cards. It's super cute. You have your little coin pot, pouch. I love how that opens up. So now we're going to grab our flap that we just did. And we're going to find, I like to find my centers on the, well, you know what, to be, yeah, on your centers. And we're going to put, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the magnet snap. Because if you're doing a thumb lock or a, even a, a turn lock, you still need to make sure that they're positioned right. So when it closes, it looks super cute. And I'm going to. Put a little V, and then I like to put the V's together, and then put my magnet in the snap. Okay, and then I'm going to base this on. One eighth of an inch. All right, so we have our front panel coin. We open this up. We have our credit card slot. It's super cute. Now we're going to grab our back connectors real quick. And we're going to find the center and we're going to put tape. Oh, sorry, tape. Which tape? Oh, no, it's not that. I'm trying to, what normally I'm looking for the ribbon that I have because what I like to do is um, to ensure that the stability of the stability of the um, bag, what I, what I do is I put it seems like a lot of double side tape, but when you see what I do, you'll understand. I'm using cork, and there you can put like a strip, like five eighths of an inch or seven eighths of an inch or whatever you have available um, in the center. Uh, like you have Shake Flex, um, I'm using a cross grain ribbon, you can use. Um, 
trying to think of other things. You can use, I'm having like a brain, or my brain's not functioning. You can use uh, Decoville, heavy or light. Those scraps are genius. Or if you have cross grain ribbon, I'm using twill tape. And normally I use a thinner one, but I can't find it, so we're just gonna work with what we got. I use this so that way, if I'm using vinyl, if I'm using cork, if I'm, it, it gives it stability. So it won't stretch, and you have less chance of there being like an accident where um, something rips out. It just gives it a, a little bit of stability, and it's not a whole lot of bulk. Cross grain ribbon is actually best. You can get those at Michael sometimes for like 99 cents, especially if like a holiday pass. And no one's gonna see it because it's gonna be inside your um it's gonna be inside your seam. So it's gonna be hidden. Just using double sided tape. I'm using a lot actually because I'm trying to stick. My double sided tape has been really taken off my nail polish. <laughs> All right. We are going to off the tape which we did and we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch I'm going down both sides and I'm going to start and then what I do is I bring another one right this behind it on the same side and then I'm going to do it again I usually just cross over on whatever piece I ended on. We have these pieces we're going to get your rings for them so i'm getting two three four i have rectangles i'm using i, can, I didn't have d rings and the one inch d ring I'm going to put them on there It just gives it a little, you can use Decoville Light, Shape Flex, whatever you have on hand. It doesn't have to be cross grain. It's just something I use that is not that expensive. So we're gonna put these to the sides and we're going to get the back pocket for our piece. We're going to cut Tapes, size two, nine inches. I'm going to put the zipper on. Bring the zipper all the way to the other end. We're going to base this on. We're going to base one side on using one eighth of the inch seam allowance.
and then we're going to grab our back piece, which is pattern piece D. going to go with it because I think I think when I cut the pattern I did it not I'm going to put the zipper the other this other direction because I believe when I cut this I cut it near it on the wrong sides I put the I didn't cut it from pattern piece on the right side I think I put it on the drew it on from the wrong side and now it's like kind of mirroring Hold on. I'm gonna put this on just We'll see what I mean in a second. We can still work out. It's going to be fine. We're going to do this at put together, sew together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. You just guys are seeing all my little goof ups. It's a part of sewing, and then improvising and thinking on your toes is a part of it too. Going to, I'm going to press this down and we're going to take this little seam allowance here. We're going to press it towards the fabric, towards the main exterior fabric, and we're going to top stitch it down at one eighth of an inch. That was really nice top stitching. Don't you like it when you do, like, you're like, yeah, I did that top stitching. Then we're going to grab our piece U. I'm sorry, we're going to grab this and we're going to base this in place. And you know, I'm, if the zipper's in the wrong direction, I will be able to just take it off and put it in the right. We're going to baste it at one eighth of an inch. this right sides together using one fourth of an inch seam allowance. going to now top stitch again pressing the seams towards the exterior fabric at one eighth of an inch And 
and we are going to pull the fabric. I like how this comes together. You're going to pull the fabric towards the where so like where the exterior meets. And we are going to we're going to cut into this and we're you can okay so you can cut into this to go around or i'm just going to you can, what i'm what i'm going to do is i'm tracing this and i'm going to Make sure none of the. I'm going to trace this, and this is where I'm going to sew real quick inside the line that I just made. And then I'm going to trim that off. So that way it will be there. And then I'm going to. stitch. Am I supposed to just magically can okay. <laughs> going to stitch this down. And it's gonna be really tight and close, but it's gonna work out. If you do this mirror image, it will work out. You're just going to have to put the zipper on the other side. <laughs> you could just say it was an adjustment. <laughs> Let me trim. And there it goes, it's at the full. Just going to do that part because I forgot to trace that out. Okay. And then I'm going to grab another zipper full and put this on. This also, I on my first bag, which I just realized I did not show you, um, <laughs> I definitely um, put my label on the back because it just, it looked really, really nice. If you're having troubles with your zipper pull, just make sure each coil is the exact same height. Um, whenever I don't have them the same height, then I, I get frustrated. And they should just click on. And we're almost done with the back piece. Um, but we're going to now stitch around this. Making sure that we enclose all of the, the lining piece. We're going to stitch around this real quick. One eighth of an inch seam allowance. that trim off any excess you can keep the zipper in here some people because like if, if there ever is an issue with just the zipper and you're replacing it for a friend family customer having a long zipper tail can be super beneficial um we're going to find the center clip 
And we're going to put the big D ring one and base that in the center. And we're trying to keep, um, what is it? Um, the bottom of the connectors, uh, a little bit over a half an inch or more. Center one inch of the connectors to the top edge. You can trace that out with chalk if you need so. Back stitch. It's good to have um, the back of that because it just it helps reinforce it. Then we're going to go one inch from each edge. I'm just going to grab a chalk pencil. And we're going to go towards the inside. And you can, what you could do, is just draw a line to make sure it's even. Each one are even instead of eyeballing it like I do. <laughs> So go towards the, the inside, I'm going to grab the threads and base this down. Yep, my hands want to work. <laughs> Then I'm going to bring my threads over here across. Okay, so then we're going to trim your threads. <laughs> We're going to grab our bottom piece and then our top piece. Get the top piece. Please check the more just has a lot top. Okay, let me go get the top piece and I'll be right back. All right, we're going to grab pattern piece S and we're going to put it on top. The bottom is exactly what we did before. We're going to put three folded to get seams together, wrong, right sides together. And we're going to go three eighths of a three eighths of an inch, and then we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Same with this. We're going to do it now. When you're doing this, this area can get bulky because you're going from like two, three layers to now like multiple layers. So this is where a hop jumper is really good or you can take it very, very slow, but I do recommend a hop jumper. I sometimes have to use one on this machine. And knowing your machine is key. Like if you have to get a new needle or rethread your machine, I'm gonna start going slow because we're about to jump thicker layers and the slower I get the less less jumps like you know the um jump stitches and sometimes I'll even hand crank it and 
Okay, and what I do, just for good measure, is I'll go like one eighth of an inch lower than the seam allowance just on the area. We're gonna top stitch it, but I don't know. It just makes me feel like it's extra secure. Gonna flip this up. And we're going to top stitch it at one eighth of an inch. And again, when you're top stitching, take your time because there's going to we're going to get to this area that has a little bit more bulk. One stitch at a time. Okay, we have our back and our front done. And next we're gonna do the lining. We did the most hardest part. Okay, so we have our back panel and our front panel. What I did is, it's not in the pattern, but you can do it if you wish. You don't have to do it because your pattern, your pieces are secure on how you sewed it because you sewed them, you know, uh, right sides together and I got sandwiched in and then you top stitch um, just for extra security because I'm really rough on bags I went ahead and did a rivet on each one of these I pushed I just um, did it right in the middle of it and then you now I'm centering it punching it and we have that so we have our back and our front and things are coming together pretty sweetly I'm going to put this press away we're going to be using it in just a moment we are now going to you get the grab handle Let's see the grab handle is just is 17 inches by one and a half and then the second grab grab handle is nine by one and a half inches pieces we are going to find the middle of each piece and just trying to get the marking tool I'm going to draw the middle on the inside with a pen because it won't be seen, and on the outside, what shock. Chalk rubs off easily, so there's definitely the perk of that. If you don't want to use, you don't have a chalk pen, um, a Tandy leather pen would work well as well. Something that just can be removed easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the double-sided tape to the wrong side of the shorter piece. Double-sided tape has like a lot of burrs all over it. Burrs are the strings I collect why I'm sewing. <laughs> And we are going to fold it in like so. And what I like to do is I like to use my roller just to help keep 
the glue down. Sometimes if you don't press really well, the um, double sided tape just like lifts up and you're like, oh man, not the best. We're going to I'm going to do double side tape on the main piece too. I'm going to fold it to the center. You could draw a line down the center so you can have a visual guide. Sometimes also if my tape is not coming up really easily, then I just use the roller on that too. I use the roller on most things. to seam roll this the best I can with this get it nice and crisp looking then we're going to take some double-sided tape and put it on the short handle the back about a half an inch away beginning and end If of double sided tape gums up your needles, you can look at like Dritz wash away tape that they sell at local craft stores because it's like it, it doesn't gum up the needles or you can use glue. So we're going to put, we're going to line up the two marks that we made for the centers and center it on here. My white line's there. I know it's really faint, but that's why I kind of like the chalk pencil um, because even if it's kind of stubborn, it just wipes off easily but that's also the reason why I don't like it sometimes <laughs> all right so we're gonna start a half an inch away from the short handles so what I'm gonna do is I see where my short handle stop I'm gonna draw a line on here and again I see where it stops just like you can do this, just eyeball it and you'll see. We're going to stitch the grab handle with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're not going to back stitch, we're going to leave long tails in the beginning and end of each. I know it's in, like we're ingrained to back stitch, so when we don't, it's like, what? And I'm going to leave long tails. And then what I'm going to do, why I have these long tails, I'm just going to jump on over to the other side. So leave long enough tails for you can cut them in half. And do a half an inch, I mean, a uh, half inch away, one eighth of an inch top stitching. Take your time, remember to breathe. This method of how the grab handle is conducted is really awesome because it helps alleviate having so much bulk and it gives it a really nice clean finish and very professional. Let's see. I'm gonna cut the strings in half so I can pull them back to the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab um, our handy dandy needle and we are going to pull our threads from the inside. There's a tell in the back and tell in the front we're going to open up our um we're opening up where that half inch is and taking the threads and bringing them to the center and when you do that you're going to tie them tie a knot off like three or four 
little knots. If the threads want to cooperate, of course. And tie the knots like where you can see the knots going into the, in, the inside and it's not sticking out. Trim it as close as you can. We're going to do same, the same thing on all three sides, the three remaining sides. Therefore, there, when you look at the handle from above or below, there's no back stitching. It's all nicely enclosed in the seam. If you want to, you could drop a, a little drop of fray check when you're done in each one. Or if you have a thread zapper, you can zap them to help seal the, um, the threads if you're using polyester, which I am using polyester. I do believe cotton can, can work for bags. I just think polyester holds up for a longer period of time for wear and tear. But again, that's just my personal preference because I'm extremely hard on bags. But I have seen some beautiful bags made with cotton and like quilting and whatnot, and it's absolutely stunning. Right, this will be our last one. And I know you're like, oh, this is a long process. It is. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It is. But when the end result comes out, it's worth it. It's some sometimes things could take really fast, be really fast, and it'll be absolutely gorgeous. But I notice the things that I usually gravitate to, the, the bags that I find more intriguing are the ones that take a little bit longer time because I begin to hone skills that I never used before, as well as the end result, I'm like super proud of myself. So I'm gonna get this, these little tails right here, melt those in. All right, so we have that done. Let's go to page 29. We are going to grab our top uh, zipper main panel. This, when I told you before to have, like, have your pattern pieces with your, um, with your fabric, it's important. Because the designer, again, gives the measurements, tells you where the zipper seam allowance side's gonna be, and gives you where you're gonna need to punch holes. And that, to me, is super pivotal. So, we're gonna start with putting the lining to the side. I'm going to, where the zipper edge is, I am going to draw a seven and eighth of an inch line. Again, these handy dandy Westcott rulers <laughs> make me look like I can mark out those tool those measurements without even looking. Using chalk. All right, then we are going to Take, I'm going to get some double sided tape, just like a, a bit to help stick it down, not too big of a piece on both sides, on both ends. And just make sure that double sided tape is really in there. We're going to Make some markings. We're going to make a mark at one and one fourth. And from that line, three, three fourths. Is that three fourths or three eighths? Yeah, three fourths. Second line, three fourths. So one and one fourth on this side, too. and three-fourths of an inch. Then 
we're going to follow the second line and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch. I'm putting this right up against the zipper line that one, the line we just drew. I'm going to press that down and we're going to make the first box. We're going to go up. Sorry, let me get the seam ripper up and across and down. And we're going to tack this on at one eighth of an inch. threads and then we're going to grab your D rings or in my case my rectangle rings because I do not have enough and gold's gold we're going to thread this handle through it and we are going to then sew that box from the three fourths of an inch line, go up, and we're going to go all the way to the stitch line that we just created. We're going to go across and go down. So we're just going to connect the lines so I can look seamlessly. And we are going to draw some rivet marks. You can use your template if you wish. If it, I, I think the template makes it a lot easier because then you're just making a mark and it's centered for you. There's no having to measure. <laughs> All right, so I have my three places I'm going to hole punch, but first I'm going to do the other side. So before you do this box, make sure you thread your uh, rectangle ring or your D ring prior to doing that box, or you're going to have to unpick it, and that, that's not going to be fun. trimming the threads but I just seem to be, keep collecting them okay and then we're going to do the second box
Okay. And I'm going to go back one over because I can see that I, I, my, my stitches went off. Two stitches went off. And although the, if the person who gets this may not notice, I will. And it would, it would drive me uh, a little mad. <laughs> Bonkers. <laughs> All right. That looks so much better. All right. So we have that and now we're going to go get the template and do the other side where the rivets go. You can, she, she definitely gives you measurements in the pattern on the pattern piece and you can follow that but I just like the, I love the fact that the template can help with like perfect rivet placement, like it means a lot. So what we're going to do is punch some holes. I'm going to try. Like someone gave me this idea in one of the last, the last video I made to make sure, because I was having problems with my hole puncher not punching holes. And they said put something underneath it like leather or a thicker piece of vinyl and then punch the holes and it'll come out clear. So I'm going to try their method. Oh my God, it did. This person's a genius. Because <laughs> I would, it would only cut out part of it. So person, if you're watching, I will put your name. I have to go find the comment, but I believe it was in the last video. You're a genius. Thank you so much. Yeah, whenever I was punching holes, it would just only cut through like the first layer and I would have to repunch it or like get an owl and try to dig it out. But that is, that is awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get some rivets. I would normally get small ones. These are a little bit bigger than I want, but work what we have these are medium I usually would get small because it's not a whole lot of layers I like this Riva de detail it's elegant and at the same time it's a, it gives you the security you need for a grab handle me I won't if I don't hear that click when I'm like just setting them with my fingers before I um, set them permanently I feel like that rivet and that the male or the female part just do not like go together well and I need to put in a different rivet because having a rivet set crooked and then you have to like remove it it's not fun okay so I'm using my my press from Minkus and Margo it's a small mom and pop shop on Etsy. Um, I like them, they have really good customer service. I just bought some more rivets today that were like spiked. Um, and they, they, you can reach out to them and ask them questions and they'll help. They have really cool rivet dies too. Like spikes, flat circles, stars. They have like the jean button one. And really great customer service. All right, so what we're gonna do is now grab our zipper tape, which is 13 and a half inches. So I'm going to fray these, I'm not fray this, burn these, so that way they can stay. And then 13 and a half inches. Draw that real quick. And as you can see, if you're looking at the, um, on page 30, they already have the zipper pulls on, on the design, on the picture. I try to follow, like, I try to follow what the designer wants for, 
the reason is that it's trusting the process because obviously I wanted my bag to look like the cover page, which is their, you know, design, their bag that they made. And you need to just kind of just trust their process. Each designer has their, like, their own little methods and learning new methods is something that's just amazing. So I'm gonna bring it all the way down here and put it on the second one. Okay, so that's on. And we are going to take Trim off the woven fuse <laughs> excess. We're going to take our lining piece and we are going to, of course, I have to trim this straight or it's going, won't go straight on my thing. Okay. We're going to take our woven interface and lay it on here onto our lining Move this real quickly and we're going to base this at one eighth of an inch you can use clips um pins if you're using cotton or you can just lay raw side to raw side and just eyeball it just matching those raw sides to raw sides going to take the zipper lining, I mean a main exterior, and I will clip this because it has like a bowed curve now because of the handle. So I don't want anything shifting. We're going to sew this with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Moving the zipper heads a little bit out of the way. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Threads, and then we're going to bring it right sides together, I mean, wrong sides together. So, I'm just going to pop a couple clips in here so it doesn't shift. And we're going to do one eighth of an inch all around this, this section. So, we're going to start. I like to start from the opposite seam so that way when I get to it everything is nice and if something goes wrong like what just happened me not trimming like not me not holding my threads it won't look on that's going to be concealed into the um binding but it's not going to be where you see in the top stitching so let's try that again and hold onto our threads
oh yeah, you can go up this side too. I didn't do it, but um, it just helps enclose all the, the edges. All right, once I done. Now we're going to grab a sec zipper panel two. And we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to line up the lining and I'm trying to make sure this matches as much as possible so there's no wonkiness when we're putting it together. You could pin, clip, eyeball it, whatever you're comfortable with. And we're just doing this at one eighth of an inch and we're just basing this lining panel on right sides of the lining panel up to the wrong sides of the zipper. right side, I mean the exterior and put it right sides touching together. And we're going to do sew this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning of end of when you're done. So once we um, top stitch one eighth of inch around here, we're going to now start making the rest of this gusset. It gets really exciting because your bag comes, is coming together. It's just real exciting. So we're going to take, you want to make sure everything lines up right now. If it, if something is a little bit bigger, like, this is when you want to make sure everything lines up. Do you see like, so that it's really important for all that to kind of go together. If something's just a, like a hair off, like you have <laughs> extra interface poking out. This is the time just to trim it. I have like extra interfacing. Okay. All right. So, we're going to take this and we're going to go, sorry, we're going to do the lining first. I always forget this designer is, I have extra interfacing on that too. We're going to take lining and we're going to interface it, not interface it. We're going to base it together at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to put exterior piece with exterior piece, and we're going to sew it at three eighths of an inch. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Trim. 
then we're going to top stitch out one eighth of an inch pulling the um, seams towards the bottom gusset. machine is not acting nice right now. Let's see. Yeah, it has a whole bird's nest. Remove that real quick and re-thread the machine. It's the, it's not a bulky seam. My, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's the thread. I'm trying to I had Guterman in the bottom bobbin, and I don't know if my machine actually likes Guterman thread or not. When you re-thread, uh, make sure that all your levers are up too. So when it goes through the disc, it's not resisting. Okay, now I'm gonna remove these top stitches and re. I'm just going in with my owl real quick, my stiletto, and just lightly picking the top stitches so when I do it, it can be nice clean. I'm gonna basically stitch in the ditch kind of method over the previous holes I made. All, the seam is going to go towards the bottom gusset, one eighth of an inch. There we go. It sounds way better because I was like not sounding normal. Okay. And then we're going to that startled me. So we're going to repeat that on the other side. I'm going to. So this down at one eighth of an inch, the lining. You can trim the the excess zipper tape, but you don't have to because it's going in sandwiched in between um, an area that's not going to get sewn on after we do the top stitching. It's up to you. I sometimes like leaving it, so if I have to. I don't know if I make a mistake, I'll have it's easier for me to repair, you know, a zipper tape that has excess than none. So, three eighths of an inch back stitching, beginning and end. And then we're going to Bring this to the front, press the seams towards the bottom exterior, and we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch, holding your toes. Just trimming any excess threads along the way. All right, and then we're going to quickly just base the the lining and exterior together so they're one piece. So that um, when you're sewing, when you're sewing the um, bag, something can easily, you know, come out, and you're like, oh man, I I, I missed a hole section you won't really have that if you base these together okay i'm going to base the other side Okay, 
going to trim threads. I'm also trimming any little over overage or just like the little excess threads that come out from shedding. Well, fraying, I mean, shedding. I'm too used to saying that with my dog. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So then we're going to now work on our lining pieces. We are going to take the two lining slip pocket pieces, slip pocket pieces, and we're going to put them right sides together. And I'm going to, again, again, extra shape flex. We're going to place them right side, on wrong sides, touching. And we're going to, we're on page um, 32. No, yes, 32. We're going to slip stitch it, not slip stitch it. We're going to sew it together. Just going to baste it together um, like one eighth of an inch all the way around. We're going to now grab our we're going to grab our trim pocket trim and I'm just going to grab some double sided tape I'm just going to put it in the middle of the trim You could draw a line prior to this, three-fourths of an inch, so you could find your perfect center. Every time my phone buzzes, I jump. <laughs> And we're going to um, top stitch this down using one eighth of an inch. Then I'm going to cut off the excess. And then I'm going to double check that it was all caught in the back and it was trim any threads, which I always seem to have abundance of. And then we're going to go to page 33 and we're going to take one of our lining pieces, which are L1. And we're just going to machine baste this slip pocket one eighth of an inch all the way around, except for the opening. Put the, the the pocket that has a slip pocket we're going to baste it on with the back of the back exterior 
because when you open up the bag, then this little pocket's right there. You can throw your phone, what have you, around it. We're going to base this at one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to grab some clips. And I'm going to start clipping this in place before I baste it. Just make sure everything lines up as best as possible. And basing this in place helps tremendously with the binding when we start to bind the, thing, the bag together. One eighth of an inch. <laughs> That side looks good. Then we're going to grab the lining piece that has no pocket and put it right sides together. With our exterior piece front. Make sure the zippers are out of the way. One eighth of an inch all the way around. And remember on this side, it's gonna be a little bit thicker where the zippers are because you're going through some layers. So take your time. Use a hump jumper if you need it. Um, if you're on a domestic machine, a walking foot would be nice because it helps. Uh, you'll get that pull from the bottom of the feed dogs, and then there'll be a top feed dog that counteracts to help pull the fabric through. Or uh, like you can switch from a 9014 needle to a 116 sharp. Microtex is my favorite. Do not use a leather needle unless you're actually using leather because leather needles do like a weird triangular punch can help and it can pro like perforate your um, vinyl and that's not fun. All right, so we have like, we're, we're doing it now. So what we're gonna do is I like to always work with the front panel first, but in this one they show the back. So we're going to do that. We're going to, I say always find your centers. Trim threads, it's helpful right now, especially. So what I like to do is I'll take my seams and I'll match them and put a clip in it. Do the same thing on the other side. Lay it as flat as possible. Okay, sorry, that was excess shape flex. And I'm just going to put a little snip, a little triangle snip. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to smush this down, having 
This seems neat. And I just put a clip on. I'm definitely trying to find the center. So we're going to do that. So the reason why I think the back one is done is because the handle goes toward it's closer to the back than it is the front just to make sure that you have positioned everything the right way so i go i match up my my center marks and from there i just start clipping And I'm a person that uses a lot of clips, so you could staple too, um, and then just remove the staples afterwards. Side. It's not a very big bag, so it's going to be easy to it's going to be easier to navigate. It's actually a really cute size. I feel like this is a perfect bag size for everyone. All right, so what I do from here is you can see how this. We're gonna now, we have a, some room here that's acting a little finicky. So I'm gonna take my scissors and snip into the gusset no more than one fourth of an inch because our seam allowance is three eighths. We want to make sure that we get all these snips. I'm just doing like little baby snips through the gusset to help ease this curve in. And we just pull a little bit and bada bing, bada boom, it's done. It's like magic. And we're gonna do the same thing. The reason why I click first is I want to see, make sure I, my machine is like going ghost. Okay, we're going, I, I wanna see how much room I need to do and how, how many snips am I gonna have to do. I like to do, um, one fourth that one fourth of an like go one fourth in and one fourth across and I kind of go to the points where I know it's not being eased in and then I work from there see it kind of just spreads out when you do that and we're going to pop some clips All right, so we're going to sew this together. Um, we're going to sew the everything together using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance, and then when we start binding, we're going to use a three eight. If you want to, you can use a stiletto to help pull a fabric that's trying to shift when you remove the clips.
so we basted this on or well, it's stitching and what you could do what i like to do i know this could be a pain for some people is i like to go like see i like to pull it out to see if it got caught this did not get caught in the seam allowance so what i will do is i will pick out this particular area so that way it can make sure it and and make sure it got caught i've had this happen to me where i like bound the whole bag and then all of a sudden i realized an area didn't get caught and i'm like devastated because i have to unpick everything and try again so i've learned to just like take the time look it's worth it and i'm just going to bring this back over to the machine and just sew that little circumference real quick and it could be because i didn't pull it enough with my owl to make sure that the the exterior um the exterior was really getting caught and just not the lining All right, so what I, again, what I do is I take it, I turn it, make sure that the corners are in, and just make sure that everything got caught in the seam. Like this area right here is like barely caught, but I can just, now I know this area is the area that I'm going to definitely make sure I keep my eye on. It just, it helps tremendously. You can look from the inside out as well. It, it's it's your discretion. It's just something that I do. Because my favorite method of making bags is binding. Because I like the way it looks. It's just a really clean finish. So we would grab our binding. And I made mine. I should have made it purple, but I ran out of purple fabric. So I just went with the colors of the fall. <laughs> And I like to, when I open up my binding, I like to open it, open it up and fold it a little bit on itself, like a half inch. And I put, I bind starting with the top. I know this sounds, sounds weird, but when you look into your bag, people can see directly on the bottom and no one ever looks at the top of the gusset. So with this, we're going to do a scant lower than three eighths of an inch. And the reason why I'm using um, bias binding is that you can get a nice and taut. You can use, I've used twill tape. I know some people use waterproof canvas. Um, for me, the reason why I don't use waterproof canvas is, despite what people say, waterproof canvas frays. If it rips, little burrs and fibers come out, and that's technically fraying. And you, yes, you can melt it down. Um, I just, I feel like it's going to be four layers anyway, so I might as well just have it be, if you're folding over waterproof canvas, you're you're going through the same amount of layers because waterproof canvas is supposed to substitute cotton and a interfacing. So technically it's four layers when you're cutting it like that. And that's the same amount of layers as bias binding. So I would, I'd rather have bias binding and I know all raw edges are enclosed and there's no frame. That again, that's personal preference. Everyone's different. Take your time. I know this is like super exciting because we're almost done with uh, with the bag. And you just put in all this like hard work and you want to see like what you made. So I'm going to cut a tail off a little bit. And I'm going to, when I get to the front, I'm just going to kind of fold this in.
do. And then I'm going to cut off the excess. All right. So I'm just going to fold over the bias binding. Trim any excess threads. I'm just clipping down the bias binding. I don't use as many as clips because it's already secured to the bag. I just want to make sure that it's covering up any previous stitching. That's why we use a scant 3-8 so that way we can make sure we enclose all, this, all the seam allowance and have no exposed stitches. All right, so we have this all formed up. Now you can, this bag is really soft. You can lay it flat and go all the way down, but I like to go like this. I, I put exactly where the three eighths of the inch mark is and I do a stitch forward and back and I kind of just grab my owl, have my hand, having all the weight kind of go towards my hand and just so. For me, it's easier to go up and around than go flat because I'm always afraid that I'm going to catch something like um, the other side of the gusset. Make sure you're um, using your, your owl or your stiletto just to help just make sure that all the stitches are enclosed. I made my own um, bias binding. I, I really wish I had like tan. I was gonna use muslin, but it kept fraying. So I was like, mm, hard pass. If you have a heavier duty industrial, just a thought for the industrial people out here. If like I made this bag in all cork and it doesn't have a lot of interfacing on the bottom, but I thought it would be really cool to have the binding cork inside as well. I've never seen anyone do that. I want to try it. If you try it out, let me know what you think. Cause I thought it would look really pretty when you like having the matching, like cause cork, you can have like long pieces of scraps. So this is not a really big bag. It, the circumference of the bag is probably like 33 or 34 inches. And I thought that would be really cool if the inside was enclosed with cork. Just a thought. I think, and depending on the vinyl, as long, I think it will look cool with vinyl too, as long as it's not marine vinyl. Cause that, even with like a heavier machine, that's a lot of bulk. Um, and you can edge paint it. I thought that would be cool. For this particular bag, it will work because there's not a lot of interfacing. One side done. Let's get the other side. We're going to find our centers again. I just like to 
put some clips in the areas and then clip my little bees and watch them fling over and see my husband's head just bobbing back and forth like <laughs> every time I do it. Beans go flying when you're around me. And let's see. We're going to put one, two clips there. And we're just matching up the V's. You should be really excited. You're almost there. And then I just start clipping. And there's going to be some bulk on this again. Um, this is when taking your time really helps. And then you just snip in. To ease the fabric in. A few more snips on the side. Some more on this side. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do one fourth of an inch round and then we're gonna grab our bias binding and be patient with this because um, there is some bulk from the, where the zipper pockets are. So patience is a virtue on this one, definitely. It's definitely doable. Again, if you're on a domestic, a walking foot or increasing your um, stitch length or changing out your needle from a 9014 to like a 116 Microtex sharp, sharp will help tremendously. The Pro, all the double size tape we use are not in the seam allowance. So your needle should not be gummed up. It should just be going through flawlessly. If you have any wrinkles, make sure it's above the stitch line where your needle's going through because above it won't show, below it definitely will. Have you seen any loose threads around the way? Just turn them on. Apparently, they just keep coming. <laughs> See, like there's a little crinkle that wants to pop up. I'm just going to maneuver the fabric until it's gone.
Okay. I got it all basted on. I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm gonna trim threads and like fray little frays, little burrs. Alright, and then what I do is I, I kind of open up my zipper and I just want to see like like I'm gonna fill around to see if there's any like my fingers not slipping through anything. Okay, and this area did not catch all of the front of my of my flap. And I just want to make sure that is definitely caught. It is now caught. Okay. Everything looks good. I'm going to grab my bias binding. Start at the top. And going a scant three eighths of an inch, not exactly three eighths of an inch, just a scant. Pulling the binding taut while I'm going around. Trying to cover up the one fourth of an inch facing stitch. Get a little thicker, so take your time. I'm just going to squish my, my bag a little bit so I can, I can give a little bit more ease into my binding. I'm going to cut off my Binding tail, trim threads. Let's see. I'm just going to go over this part of the bias binding one more time because it looks like it's one fourth and not three eighths. Trimming threads. Okay. 
Okay, let's see. We're going to blind this. Pulling this filter. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to start clipping. In place. And we're about to start sewing at 3 8 of an inch. Once I cover all of my prior stitches. <laughs> and get the thread. All right. Three eighths of an inch. Back stitch at the beginning and end. And again, you're going through a lot of layers. Take your time. And threads as I go to that are like collecting to my clothes and bag. Anybody else when you get up from the sewing machine have like a bird nest of thread? <laughs> I sure do. been not a good incident.
All right. Trimming threads. So we're going to now turn this. I'm going to pull from a corner and just flip it. I'm going to poke out any rounded areas with the binding. I'll pull out any threads that peered through. And I'm just going to roll the seams between my fingers to help it take its shape a little bit better. Do the same thing over here. This bag is super cute. <laughs> okay, so we have our bag and all we have to do now is do the strap oh uh there is a zipper facing you can do in this she has like a dundums where you can um do some alternate things but with the strap it's like any basic strap oh i didn't yeah, it's like any basic any basic strap you have. You're going to add some double-sided tape. And So we're going to have the double sized tape like we just did. I'm going to put this right behind me and I'm going to roll out the seams, but that is just too cute. <laughs> I'm really, I love Hocus Pocus and the second movie comes out at the end of this month. So I've been wanting to do a bag. We're going to fold these into itself, leaving a gap, like a 1 8 gap or 1 16th, whatever makes works fine for your machine we're making a three-fourths of an inch strap so this is three inches wide if you want it if you wanted to have a bigger strap like a one inch you needed to have the one it ha it goes through the one inch d-ring so it won't slide as well you would need to take that one inch d-ring and make it one and a half inches in order to have that And we're just leaving that little gap and trying i mean that purple keeps like it is following me i'm gonna have that in my hair watch i have super curly hair so half the times when i'm going to bed and before i take my hair down things will just like fall out like clips pens 
I've had, I had like some glitter clips in my hair last time. That's my normal post. So what I do from here is to make sure that it folds onto itself is I clip like every three to four inches, making sure that the, the, it matches up like the, the buds match up right. One's not overlapping it. So taking out more beige threads. <laughs> And we are going to sew. I take put this behind my back, like a, just like a rope. I'm going to increase my stitch length to a four. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay. One eighth of an inch. Take your time, there's not a race. I'm going to do some back stitches on the area that I did not catch because I was in a hurry. Cork, like it, like I said, is super different from vinyl. Cork is so much more forgiving, and because of its natural marks within it, like the bark, it just looks like another feature. If I had an endless amount of cash, I would sew with nothing but cork. I love cork fabric. It is expensive though, but it's worth it. To me, it's 100% worth it. And the more and more colors they're coming out with, it, it's just nice. Set. And we're going to go one eighth of an inch down the other side. Triglider, not class shooter. That's it. I'm going to thread one end, my three fourths of an inch, and I am going to punch a hole. I'm just dropping pattern pieces too. I gotta pick them all up. <laughs> punch a hole.
and I'm going to get my rubber set, setter and I'm going to set this with it. Then I'm going to take one of my spool cloths and I'm going to thread it through and we'll take this string. Make sure my strap is straight and bring it through. Take my other swivel hook, thread it through, and then I'm going to, I'm folding up roughly about one and one fourth of an inch. And we're going to bring this through. Set the rivet. And let me see the back. We're going to Bring the hardware through. It might have been easier actually to do the other side. I always try to make things difficult. Like it's not going to go through the swivel hook on the <laughs> on the tri glider. I mean. It's a tight fit, but it's it'll it'll work. We have a backpack. Ooh, I gotta I'm gonna put a clip on this because I you're gonna need a backpack or you could put it onto the rings right here and have a crossbody. So we have our magnetic snap with extra little burrs. And extra string in here <laughs> and we have a credit cards a coin or a candy pouch your, your discretion I'm not judging <laughs> we have inside a nice slip pocket we have a back pocket a nice roomy back pocket we have a crossbody that turns into a backpack altogether I think this is a gorgeous bag and anyone that makes it gifts it are is extremely lucky because this is a gorgeous bag so if you have any questions and reference to this bag leave comments down below if there's something i used that i didn't mention where i got it from you can ask and i'll be more than willing to give you any information i can and this is the end of this beautiful bag tutorial so if you can comment like subscribe hit that notification button and share if you think of this this tutorial is worthy. I will greatly appreciate it and helps me out and helps the channel out tremendously. Until the next time I see you, happy sewing.